Hello, and welcome to another fabulous edition of SCA 101. This is actually going to be a particularly tricky video, because there's a lot of little points that I'm going to try not to tangent too much into. So this might be a little bit more confusing of a video, even by my standard. So try to just keep up. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll, or either I or someone else, will try to answer in a more intelligent, just laid out kind of point. So this is going to be speaking uh, directly about cornets, which are the crowns, the metal shiny uh, head adornments that you're going to see uh, when you go to events. Now, some brief information for the new players. A cornet is a significant deal. You unfortunately can't just come to the world and bring your little tiara and wear it around, and claim that you are a princess. Uh, unfortunately, for those people who look for that kind of gameplay, we have a set set of rules and requirements for our cornets, for our nobility. Which is to say that you can't become a nobility, you just have to work towards that via, once again, just via putting in time, effort, and energy to helping the game, and uh, finding out which aspects you want to go towards. There are a lot of different little uh, cornets, so I'm going to start explaining kind of the general gist between the differences in them. As I've gone on before, there is Baron and Baroness, which are the sitting figureheads of whatever barony they are in charge of. So in the barony, there's going to be a polling once every three years. The populace, the members of the, the population of that barony are going to vote, from that vote, all of those tallies are going to be sent to the sitting king and queen. The sitting king and queen are going to look at the voting, look at the people, and then decide based on their interpretation who would be best for the barony. Uh, nine times out of ten, the king is going to side with the populace. Obviously, they know more about the barony than he does. He is, you know, the king who's going to be all over the place, so they're going to know more about their particular barony. So 90% of the time, the king is going to elect whatever baron is the populace voted for. But, ultimately, it does go the king's choice. Very often, the king's choice is that is the set law while he's in office, at least. So, the Baron and Baroness sit for a three-year term. Once they step down, they become Thane for the Barons, Ben Thanes for the Baronesses. So, there are a couple of terms for you to remember there. It's not too important. There's no test for it, just in case you wanted. When someone says, oh yes, I'm a Thane, that's where I wear this particular cornet, you now know what a Thane is. They used to be a sitting baron, and Ben Thanes used to be sitting baronesses. So from there, you have a king and queen, which in the kingdom of Aidenveld is decided via a tournament of arms. So hard suitors suit up and fight for the crown. They fight to become king of their sovereign nation. The, the kingship lasts for six months, so there's two cornets, or two crowns, uh, two crown tournaments a year. After the crown tournaments, uh, a few months later, they have a coronation, which is the person who won is elevated to king. In that brief few month time, they're referred to as the prince and princess, which refers to the fact that they are going to be the next up on the throne. Kind of trying to keep it period and use period terminology, right? So if you hear anyone referred to as the prince or princess of the uh, of your kingdom, that means they are next up. When the next coronation rolls around, they are going to be elevated. So you have prince, princess, king, queen, obviously, are the ones who sit the throne. You sit, you make decrees, you uh, are responsible for handing out awards and chukis, making sure any awards that you want to be gifted to members of your populace... A lot of work goes into being king. Um, different kingdoms have different requirements for what it requires, what it takes to be a king. Some don't have it as a right of uh, arms. Some don't have a tournament. Others do different uh, things. So it's all about, once again, reaching out to your local group and finding out what their systems are. Once you've had your six months on the throne, you step down as king. You become a count for uh, the men who, be who are king. For the women, you step out down from queen and become countess. 
So Count and Countess. Once you've won, if you want to go back and fight in the crown again, you become king a second time. Once you step down from that, you become Duke and Duchess. Uh, Any time after that, three, four, five times sitting king, it doesn't really matter. You are Duke and Duchess when you step down. No new name changes after that. So, one more, which I'm going to touch into very briefly. There are things known as principalities, which is like a kingdom that doesn't quite have enough oomph to really be a full, sustained kingdom in itself. So it is what's known as a principality, which is a kind of a little bit of a gray area just behind uh, kingdom standards. They do have sitting members to reign over them, when you, uh, I believe those are actually referred to as prince and princess as well, uh, for their whole reign. When you are a principality, I, I am almost entirely positive now. So, sitting in a, on the throne of a principality decrees you a prince and princess. Once you step down, you become a viscount and viscountess. So those are a couple more terms. You don't need to know them, but when someone introduces themselves as viscount so-and-so... You now know what that means. Uh, My knight, in fact, is actually a Viscount. He was the one of the princes of Aidenveld, I believe, before Aidenveld was a nation. I'll have to actually talk with him about that. Uh, Soon up in these videos, I'm going to start having meet and greets with some amazing talent from my kingdom. He'll probably be the first knight in which I uh, reach out to on that. So look forward to that video. It's going to be awesome. So... Tangenting back to the nobility of a nation. Once you have the kings, queens, duches, du- du- dukes, duchesses, all of that, now you need to know, how do I interact with them? You know, they're the king. Can I really approach him? Do I, do I kneel at his feet? Do I, do I grovel? What do I do? None of that. There is a very gentle way to show respect for the crown. And that is when, for instance, let's say you're just walking down the road and you glance over and someone's coming the opposite direction and they have a little cornet. You notice a little shiny chunk of metal on the head. Oh, that's a cornet. So, what should I do? Very simply, a nice little bow of the head and a Your Excellency will cover all of your bases. If you're aware that they are the sitting king and queen, you can throw out a Your Majesty. Those are really the only ones that deserve a Your Majesty. That is a reserved word. Everything else, Your Excellency, covers all your bases. So when you're out there, you're seeing cornets, don't get worried. Don't get, you know, put off by the fact that, oh no, there's so many counts and there's a duchess over there. And oh my goodness, I'm surrounded by hats. That just means that you have so many untapped potential around you. You have... 10 years there, 25 years here, so many years of experience of people who've played this world that know how it works, that have invested their soul into this, that they've been given nobility, whether real or not, to say, hey, thank you for what you've done in the world. And that little nod of the head is giving that little bit back to them to say, thank you for what you've done. I don't know what you've done for this kingdom or for this barony, for this game, but thank you. So that's what... Respect of the cornets and respect for those positions comes from is we're not subjugated, we're not being ruled by the king. Uh, he's not, you know, having people whipped and flogged in the street. He's an awesome, cool guy 90% of the time. You know, there might be an a hole every once in a while who sits in the crown, but 90% of the time, they're amazing people who you becoming afraid of them because they're the crown just means that you don't get that awesome friendship, that awesome connection with this person that you very easily could click with. We're very similar people across the entire kingdom, so don't let a cornet, don't let a little fancy hat scare you from going over and saying, hey, your excellency, this is my first event, that cornet looks amazing, or your outfit looks amazing, or I'm just trying to find some resources for X, Y, and Z. I would like to make my introduction, blah, blah, blah. There's a million ways to just cold call, interact with a baron or a king or a queen without it being a big deal. Uh, They're not actually the king or queen of a nation. A lot of times, 
he works at a Circle K or he pumps gas. He, you know, whatever his job is, he's a normal salt of the earth kind of guy, typically. Same with the women. They're normal people. Just because they have a crown doesn't mean you need to fear them. So that's the basic gist I'm going to leave you with. If you see a coronet, a little bow of the head, Your Excellency, that gets you out of any obligations, anything like that. You've now shown your respect for the crown. And from there, it's all about introducing yourself, all about putting yourself out there so that you can learn more, so that you can have more fun. Uh, so I think this is a great place to end it on. This is Woolworth Mock Mahone saying, can't wait to see you out there.